Well, yeah, I do, uh, but um, uh, I mean, there were so many that uh, were, were real uh, memorable jumps. But, but yeah, one, one uh, uh, jump that was particularly uh, enjoyable was uh, uh, we got sent down from uh, Alaska uh, to jump the, uh, uh, the fires around Yellowstone and, uh, and the Grand Tetons. And, and uh, we had a, a nice, beautiful looking little fire. Uh, it was just one burning snag in the field. And uh, it turns out it was a two man fire jump. And uh, so we, we jumped, uh, jumped that little fire and we got on the ground and we were looking right at the Grand Tetons. It was just the most beautiful. Uh, and we were deep, deep, deep in the wilderness area. It wasn't just uh, uh, out there uh, uh, close to roads or anything. We were really in the wilderness. So the, the lookout had communication. They said, okay, you guys are so far out. We will make sure we get a hel get you uh, have a helicopter right out. So we go, oh man, <laughs> we luck out. So we, we spent a little while on this fire. And it was all, next day we were ready to leave after we waited for, I think, six hours or so, no smokes. So we start uh, calling the, the lookout, and they said, oh, sorry. Um, we had to dispatch the helicopter to a fire, so they have to walk out. So we're talking about an 18-mile pack out, only no trails. It was, it was a nightmare. I mean... So the first four miles was up and down through Jack Straw, Lodgepole Pine, and uh, ridges up and down. When well, you know we're carrying about 150 pounds on our back, it's just a total nightmare. So we get to this stream finally. We're real thirsty, and uh, all of a sudden we got a call on the radio, and it's uh, the lookout lady. She said, "Smoke jumpers, smoke jumpers, where are you?" So. <laughs> I assumed they were talking to us, and uh, I, got, I called back, and uh, I said, well, I think we're on a place called Pilgrim Creek. And she said, uh, well, guess what? We have a packer that's coming in. He'll be able to, to uh, take those big, heavy packs you guys got and put them on mules, and so at least you want to carry those packs. And so uh, th just then the, uh, the packer uh, broke in on the radio transmission and said, yeah, this is the packer, and I'm on Pilgrim Creek, Creek, Creek and I'm, I'm heading up towards those jumpers. How about having them give me a call? We'll see if, how far, if I can hear them. We'll see how close we are to them. <laughs> so me and my friend was John Jones. He's an Alaskan jumper, and he goes, uh, okay, so we yelled that down the uh, a stream, you know, big yells, how loud as we can, and uh, about 20 feet away, this guy uh, pokes his head out, and uh, he says, hi, I hear you, and so what he had, not only did he have mules, he had saddle horses for us, so uh, he said, uh, uh, oh, yeah, we got, we're going to make sure you guys have a pretty good trip out of here, and so I think it was about a 12-mile horse ride, and uh, so when we first started, he says, you go, there's going to be a little bit of, you, have you guys, have you boys ever uh, uh, ridden horses before? And so we go, oh, yeah, 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 you know, we're old cowhands, you know. And so, <laughs> so we get out of these horses, and he says, okay, he says, there's going to be a little, a little scary place up ahead, but uh, don't do anything, just hold on to the saddle horn and uh, the, let the horses just do what they do, and they'll get you across this place. So we are thinking, holy moly. So we came to this place, and it was like a sheer drop off, thousands and thousands of feet. And a little, you know, almost looked like a foot wide uh, uh, footpath in rocks. And uh, it just it doesn't seem possible, the horse being so big that we, we and we're leaning out over the cliff. Uh, it looked pretty scary to me. And so we get to the other side. He says, you boys did great. Tell me, what's scarier, doing what you just did there or jumping out of the airplanes? And we go, that was the most frightening experience of our entire life, you know, just depending on the horse. But we went on, and we saw about 500 elk uh, and one uh, um, hunter camp after another being set up by the outfitters. And it was just spectacular country. And I just had the feeling, you know, okay, I had probably um, uh, 20 jump seasons in then. And I said, this is what I, 
I signed up for this kind of deal. And uh, and then not only that, we got to the to the ranger station. Uh, the, it was a wilderness ranger station. And he said, I have to brush down the horses and give them their oats. He says, you guys wait in the truck, and uh, now we're going to go get you a steak. And we go, oh, this thing's getting better. So it's really late now. It's about uh, 1 o'clock in the morning, and we're driving. Uh, you know, uh, and then we come to this just this black stop, and uh, uh, he says, uh, "Yeah," he says, uh, "He says we're here. We're gonna get that steak." And we go, "What?" And and so he says, well, "Yeah, they're all locked up. Well, I'll have to go wake them up." But uh, you know, they're expecting us. So don't worry about it. And so uh, we go up to this gigantic log lodge. And these two, the man and the woman, they go, thank you so much for saving our place. You smoke job was your, <laughs> we go, oh yeah, right. And the, how do you want your steak? So, well, I mean, how could you get a better deal than that? So that, that ended up being my favorite jump store. But, but there were so many, uh, really, um, some of the times where uh, you jump into the middle of nowhere in Alaska and uh, you run into... Uh, uh, we work with these crews, and uh, you know, uh, I would always like, especially the Eskimo crews. I, I just loved hanging out with the Eskimos uh, because it seemed like they were really a little bit extra hospital, hospitable. And uh, but I would always get a, a piece of cardboard or write, write something on my notepad and, and get their major words of their language. And so then what I would do is. When I want something, when some part of the crew, uh, I talk to them in their Yupik language, and they would just howl. Here's this white guy trying to talk their language, you know, and the helicopters would hear that and all that. Some of the rookies would, in the other part of the fire, would say, "Does Troop speak that language?" And, then, and my friend Murray Taylor would say, "Oh yeah, he knows all that stuff, you know." But we're just having fun out there, and it was just. Uh, it was always fun. It, was, it wasn't really a job. It was uh, always an adventure. So, uh, and then I had some, had some close calls and so forth. But um, but for the most part, you know, what was really great about Smoke Jam was first off with the people. There's nobody shows up to do the job unless they're really, uh, you know, uh, socially uh, adaptable to being with a with a, a group of guys that uh, just fun loving, but at the same time. They they really they know how to do the job and they and they're they're self self starters you know you drop them off in the middle of nowhere and the only thing they uh, they have really is their wits and a few little basic hand tools and uh, and they do whatever it needs to be done and it's always a uh, you know a uh, incredible experience uh, even though you know we do the same thing over and over you think it would get it get old but it's always it's always uh, a different type of situation, and and then of course in Alaska, you, then you you're dealing with the wildlife that are you know nobody gets to hang out with the uh, you know like well sometimes I remember one one fire everywhere you go the bears count I mean if you're on a fire for um, I would say any more than a week the bears will come to the fire, and of course. When we're jumpers out there, uh, after a few days, they'll drop you fresh food. Well, of course, it always starts out where, you know, the bear comes into the jumper camp, but then all of a sudden it becomes uh, the where the jumpers are now in the bear's camp because they, they want to take it over. So there's always this little struggle going <laughs> going on with the wildlife. But, but I mean, it's just funny. You, you come walking uh, down a, a, a little uh, trail or something uh, out there in the middle of nowhere, and, uh, you, and you look ahead, and here's this bear with a, a can of uh, ham in his mouth come, come running right by him. And, uh, and so we really had a lot of bear confrontations and, and things like that. But we get to see, oh, incredible things. Like, like some, we used to have these really early season fires. They used to call them rider fires because um, the natives would uh, put the, the grass on fire around the ponds. And that would cause the muskrats to jump in the um, water, and then they'd shoot the noses off the muskrats with their 22s, and that's how they'd get their, uh, their, their furs. And so, but a lot of times, the birds, the ducks and everything, 
will have laid their eggs and uh, you can go through there and uh, and pick up pick up the uh, the eggs that were all cooked for you and uh, and have have a big egg feast and things like that nobody ever ever hears about and we always carried well my, I always carried a shotgun and later on I had a I had a a rifle barrel that was put on this, this, this shotgun action uh, and I could just snap it on the cargo and so I always had a, a way to get a uh, tarmac gun and uh, you know nice a animals out there uh, uh, nobody was and uh, and then always a fishbowl and and uh, out there just any, any kind of streaming matter catch record uh, breaking uh, grinding or uh, Arctic char or anything like that and so it really it ruins you for any kind of fishing sort of thing or, or even hunting but uh, uh, it's, uh, it's just always a, an, an adventure I mean because uh, all those guys that you if you look at that if you walk through the Fairbanks uh, loft you, what you see is uh, uh, big animal heads uh, doll sheep uh, caribou mooses uh, everything are uh, there, and uh, they uh, the little jumpers up there really know how to use their country, you know. And uh, they're all they're all hunters and all that. Uh, just just like uh, of all things, when I ordered the Fish and Wildlife Service, I figured oh they'll all be baby leaguers, and but they were all the first, last, and always were hunters and sportsmen sort of thing. But uh, but anyway, 